Good afternoon with Harianto Deman. I'm Olivia Quay with the latest from the US presidential election. Now we have the Straits Times former US Bureau Chief Jeremy Ao Young with us, as well as US Bureau Chief Nirmal Ghosh, who joins us from Washington, DC. Well, it's a race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden to 270 electoral votes. So here's an update. Trump has 108, while Biden has 118. Mm -hmm. Republican and Democratic strongholds like Alabama, Indiana, New York and Massachusetts projected to be won by their respective candidates. But Trump and Biden are still neck and neck in key battlegrounds. So, Jeremy Nirmal, let's get your thoughts. President Trump leading in Florida with more than 90% of the votes counted. Now, other battleground states are North Carolina, Texas, Ohio, Pennsylvania. More up in the air. Jeremy, what are the permutations, uh, the scenarios then at this point? Now, what states do Trump and Biden have to win to take the presidency? Okay, well, that's quite a complicated question. <laughs> Let's go step by step. Mm. Let's go, yeah, let's go step by step. Mm. Let's, let's just take a look at the map uh, as we see it right now, right. which is uh, not super indicative of where we will end up, mm -hmm. but not bad. Okay, so let's, let's uh, if you ignore for a moment the west side of the map uh, and look at the east side where there is a lot of red now. Yep. Uh, it is a numbers game after all in the end. At the point we are at, it is a numbers game and the, the number is, the magic number is 270. Mm. Yes. It is a race to 270. Uh, last time around in 2016, Donald Trump had, I believe, 306 electoral college votes. So if he, he has in effect a 36 vote uh, buffer. Mm. If Biden is to win, he needs to peel away at least 36 electoral college votes. Now, where do we get mm. this? To, yep. Where does he find these 36 on this map? Uh, a lot of the eastern states, uh, the battleground states, he was looking at Florida, he was looking at North Carolina, he was looking at Georgia, which is really traditionally a, uh, a Republican oh, state, yeah. but yeah. polling put it competitive uh, this year. So those were the three we were looking at in the early part of the day. Mm. Uh, North Carolina, Georgia and Florida. If you look at them on the map now, they are all um, pink. I pink, guess. Which, yeah. means pink which means it's Trump is Trump leading. Is leading. Yep. Tr Trump is leading. If he had won any one of the three, his chance, uh, Biden's chances of winning would have shot up to like 99%. Right. They are critical because they are biggish states with quite a number of electoral college votes. If he had picked up one of them, uh, mm it would have peeled away a lot of uh, Trump's advantage already. So right now, Trump is doing everything he needs to win. Will it stay like that till the end of the day? We don't know. But if you look at this map and you ignore the west side of it right now, you see a lot of blue and some and two states are yeah. not yet called. And this is almost what the map looked like in 2016 when he won. He, the key states where polling is competitive right now is Wisconsin right now in pink, Michigan in pink, Pennsylvania in pink. These three in 2016 uh, were called blue wall states because it uh, assumed Hillary Clinton would pick up all three. Mm. The three of them together account for 46 electoral college votes. Mm. If Biden were to pick up all three, 46, that is enough. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't need Florida, he doesn't need North Carolina, he doesn't need Georgia. Right. If he picks up all three of those, today uh, he would be president. But right now, it's right now close. all three of them are pink. Yes. Which is what? <laughs> and if they remain pink that way, <laughs> Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, if all three remain that way tonight, I would say Donald Trump would be, would be in for a second term. Right. There is, there is uh, I mean, it's very early in those three states, and I don't expect Pennsylvania will give us a result tonight. I mean, they have already said uh, a lot of postal votes that came in, uh, especially in some of the, the urban areas, some of them are only going to be counted tomorrow. Mm. So I'm not expecting any kind of result out of Pennsylvania tonight. It might very likely come down to Pennsylvania. There's one little curveball in the West, which is Arizona, which Trump won easily in 2016. Now it is light blue. That means yep. uh, Biden is leading. Mm. There are 11 votes there. So there's a combination that works without... If Wisconsin has 10 votes, if Biden loses Wisconsin, but wins Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, that's enough to be president. 
I see. Mm. Yes. So, but Donald Trump can afford for Biden just to flip Arizona and nothing else, and he will still be president. So it's it's really this numbers game. You're trying to get to, if we think about it in Biden's term, he's trying to find these 36 votes, and uh, for in Trump's mind, he is just trying to make sure he doesn't lose 36. He can lose 11, he can lose 35, he just cannot lose 36 mm. electoral college votes. Mm. So you don't expect um, Trump or the, the states that voted for Trump in 2016 to mm. flip to Biden, any of it? Yeah, so... Oh, the ones that you mentioned. Yes, so uh, those are the most likely to flip. Mm. If we look at the polling, the most likely to flip were Michigan and Wisconsin. Right now, very early in the vote count, they are, yep. they are still leaning. You see them pink on the map. Those are the ones uh, that are most likely to flip. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about tr the other scenario, which is some, uh, a state that voted for Clinton that would flip to Trump, yeah. uh, that one, there's no polling anywhere that uh, has indicated such a possibility. The Trump campaign talks about... Um, New Hampshire and Nevada especially, although we are not really seeing that come out. I think New Hampshire has already been declared mm. for Biden, yes. so that's Biden, going to yeah. stay blue. Nevada, you don't see it coloured right now. We don't have a result there. We'll see, but the polling there was not, uh, was not in his favour. That mm. said, if the map stays this way, it would already indicate there is a polling error. Mm. Because coming into tonight, uh, Biden was leading in most battleground, most if not all the battleground states. Right now, you see Trump in the actual vote count leading. It's okay. Some of it is still very early in the vote count. Mm. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Okay. okay, so I guess as we uh, progress throughout the day, we should keep an eye out for these key battleground states, including Florida, North mm. Carolina, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin so thank yeah. you so much for that, Jeremy. Normal, let's bring you into the conversation. So, Normal, um, what have the numbers so far signaled about you know, the voter sentiments and the current climate over in the US? Basically, what Jeremy said is not much different from, uh, from the 2016 map. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's gone fairly predictably so far. The red has stayed red, the blue has stayed blue. But, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, President Trump is on a pretty good course. I think uh, Joe Biden still has more pathways, more options. But uh, if President Trump stays the course, then he could, you know, end up in the second term. I think what, it, what else it shows us is that in terms of Florida, you know, there were high hopes of, uh, of uh, Joe Biden uh, winning Florida. Um, it looks like President Trump is going to carry Florida. And from what, I'm, from what I'm told, the sort of Spanish language social media outreach to uh, Cuban Americans in Florida was very powerful. The whole message that uh, Joe Biden represents a sort of radical left of the Democratic Party and this is socialism and communism in disguise that that went down you know it, it's a very powerful message for cuban americans the older generation who fled cuba so i think that has carried uh, him through and also the economy and um, the fact is that the polls show that uh, republicans are not that worried about uh, the pandemic and they're more concerned about the economy whereas it's the reverse with the uh, democrats are more concerned about the pandemic than the economy so uh, donald trump's uh, support has basically held held very very strong another interesting thing uh, I, I you know if there had been a landslide one way or the other it would have told us a lot about america a very decisive shift but there's no such shift i mean it is it is really cleaned down the middle it, it's a country which is seriously divided and that divide is not going to go away whoever actually wins the election because uh, it is such a narrow race such a tight race that divide is not going to go away and that's going to hamper the next administration whoever whoever it is they're going to have to deal with a lot of internal conflict in in the united states right uh let's talk about early voting uh, which democrats did in disproportionate numbers uh, compared to republicans who voted on the day Norma, how has early voting affected or even skewed the numbers we're seeing now yeah, early voting was, of course, as we know, it was at record levels. I mean, the whole turnout generally is record. Uh, mm -hmm. So it varies from state to state, the early voting. And early voting generally favors Democrats. And we know that also the figures tell us that. They favor Joe Biden. So uh, within the percentage that are being counted in, in states, and there are several, there are many states which are 
way less than 50% reporting still, right? Within that 50%, what percentage is the early vote is very important. And it is a significant percent this year because again, of the, of the pandemic, there was, uh, you know, uh, there, there was some reluctance from uh, Democrats in particular to come out to the polls, you know, to wait till the November 3rd and so forth. So that would give Joe Biden an early edge, which would be eroded if, you know, when Republicans turned out uh, physically to the polls on November the 3rd. And that, that, is, that is actually the pattern. And that was one of the things forecast about this election, that there will be sort of a, a early edge to, uh, uh, for Joe Biden, and then Donald Trump would catch up. Mm -hmm. And then that leaves the question of what happens to the early votes, the mail-in ballots, which have not been counted by tonight. Are there a substantial number left? And uh, what what happens to them? I mean, it, the president has said that they should not be counted. And there are, there are going to be court battles to stop them from being counted. All this is going to go on. This kind of, sort of drama is going to go on beyond tonight if uh, we do not get a really clear-cut result tonight. Hmm. I see. Well, that's the update from us. Thank you to our U.S. Bureau Chief, Namal Ghosh, in Washington, D.C. And, of course, former U.S. Bureau Chief, Jeremy Ao Yong. We'll be back with a live update on the U.S. election at 1 p.m. But keep checking straightstimes.com for developments throughout the day on our live blog and microsite. You can find a state-by-state -state breakdown, news developments, analysis, as well as social media updates. Now, once again, I'm Harianto Diman with Olivia Kui. Thanks for watching.